This is somewhat interesting. This man, <laughs> he uh, had gotten married. Yes. <laughs> and um, what was really interesting is he had somewhat of an epiphany, right? Um, that he spoke to a crowd of a thousand individuals, right? <laughs> Other engineers about how to solve complex human problems. Yes. <laughs> He invented the mouse. Oh, designed the mouse to replace the light pen as a pointing device. <laughs> he didn't really get paid much for it. Only got $10,000. <laughs> but what happened was, um, well, he, he really did something, didn't he? Yeah, he really did. <laughs> um, as I was reading this, right, uh, a shy engineer, but, oh, oh. <laughs> Well, the mouse is somewhat important when you think about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, from the punch cards carry up quantitative tasks, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And it didn't come up the notion of using it to solve urgent and multifaceted problems facing humanity. <laughs> he had the first ever live demonstration. Mm -hmm. Now, um, he had this idea of working with women, and it kind of was uh, poo poo during his time, but I thought he was somewhat ingenious in how he approached the whole want of intelligence. Yes. One of these real smart guys here. Mm -hmm. I expect a presentation, an engineer, so on and so forth. And instead, he gave him a standing ovation. Now, um, accident 1986, yes, sat down and talked to him. Entire career, he'd gotten engaged working at the NACA, the precursor of the NASA. Mm -hmm. Now, he realized he had achieved both of his major life goals, a good job, and a good wife. Oh. Now, what if that was your whole goal in life as a man? If I am a man. Mm -hmm. All you wanted was a good job and a good wife. Mm -hmm. Now, for a lot of men, if they had those two life goals accomplished, yes, I'm wanting a good job running one of the world's, if not the world's largest corporation, and I'm wanting a good woman that likes the idea of me getting her pregnant. Now, if I could accomplish those two major life goals, I tell you, then it hit him. It just went quick. Ooh, look at that, clicking. Now, augmenting the human intellect, the conceptual framework, Ooh, the human intelligence. I actually did turn it to page 124 because I thought he was so interesting. He had two major life goals. He just wanted a good job and a good wife. <laughs> Now, he didn't get the response he's hoping for, so on and so forth. Network improved communities. The ARPANET <laughs> couldn't see why real people needed to support users. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what he did was, yes, mid-1970s, use government funding to support a quickly growing ARPANET. <laughs> now, in a highly unorthodox move, yes, <laughs> He hired young women who graduated from Stanford with degrees in fields like anthropology and sociology, <laughs> who had three daughters himself, believed that women were ideally suited to building new cultures. <laughs> His new hires out to other institutions to build network improvement communities. <laughs> now, why would this guy that designed the mouse think that some women are ideally suited to building new cultures because <laughs> he had three daughters? Yeah. His daughters influenced his decision. If he'd had a son, what if he'd had three sons? And he, would he have still thought that about? What did he see about having daughters? <laughs> now, a lot of men are upset that I only want to work with women in the office. And some of them are married. Okay. <laughs> They go home to their husband and they happen to be in a five-star hotel in a different location than where my office is at because we usually are working in a location where there's multiple hotels. Yes. But there are those women that when they understand network improvement communities, 
backwards. I am somewhat unorthodox in my approach to intelligence. Yes. Now, Xerox, the Park Lab, seemed like to be something of well-funded research lab. <laughs> and back then in 1979, allowed Steve Jobs and other Apple executives to tour its lab twice in exchange for the right to buy 100,000 shares of Apple. <laughs> How many other corporations have allowed for somebody to see their actual technology at work in exchange for the right to buy? How the fuck is it that you can give somebody the right to... Okay, I'm upset about that. Why don't you get me this whole concept about corporations having the right to buy the stock of other corporations? Because... As an investor, let's say I went public with all my innovations one day a year from now and I'm worth trillions of dollars. They're all public. But I keep a percentage of the shares for myself and other corporations want to know what we're working on. <laughs> Can you, as a corporation, uh, obstruct another corporation from owning your corporate stock? Da, 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 da. <laughs> Could you mm, 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 get me the actual ownership of corporation stock of other corporations? Yes, yes, yes. Now, it's real nice that Steve Jobs and other executives towards lab twice in exchange for the right to buy 100,000 shares. Now, I know the Supreme Court of the United States is saying corporations are people. <laughs> That's why I'm suing them as people for the amount of money they've spent on the technology that seems to have fucked up the whole population. <laughs> but what I'd like to know is <laughs> what corporation? <laughs> well, why don't you get me all the corporations? And uh, is it in their 10K or is there something else that they have to file when they buy corporate stock of another corporation? Well, there's a continuity of interest. Chow, 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 chow. I know. <laughs> Why don't you get me the actual ownership? Oh, Jobs and Bill Gates were just 13 years old. No. <laughs> I'd like to know the ownership of the actual corporation. <laughs> stock uh, that is not their own stock but they've invested in other corporations because they like the idea of owning something that happens to be a competitor <laughs>